Okay, so welcome into this special PH Next Rising podcast uh, episode on YouTube. I'm joined today because we've got a, a very big game coming up on Sunday. Uh, it sounds as though so. I'm joined by Tigres and Mexican national team midfielder Alexia Delgado, who also, you reckon the uh, Sun Devils there on your t shirt, I see. Yeah, always, always with me. <laughs> <laughs> Because Alexia was the captain for ASU until she graduated last year. Uh, but yeah, there is a very big game coming up on Sunday. The Women's World Cup final, Spain taking on England. Wish it wasn't that last team, but hey, we move on. Uh, so again, not a big fan of England in this one. So I'm going to start off with Spain. And Alexia, I want to get your takes on just how this team has done overall in this tournament. Well, I mean, I think Spain came, you know... It's always been a good team. Like, it's a team that they like to have the ball. They like to have big possession of the ball, which we can clearly see in games. Um, they've definitely faced some tough challenges um, during the World Cup. It was interesting to see the game against Japan, which they lost 4-0. But, I mean, as you can clearly see, they recover from that. And to be honest, it's a team that I really like, the way they play, like, they always like to have the ball. They're always looking to be dangerous, but always trying to play one, two touches, you know? So it's a team I really like. So it's also like a good exhibition for the public, you know? Like you like to see those games. So I'm looking forward to see the final. So you look at Spain and look, there are headline players on there in terms of their top scorers, but you've also got someone who, as a youngster coming off the bench, has really been critical in these last few games in Salma Parayuelo. And just how important do you think she could be in this upcoming game? No, oh, I think definitely super important. Probably not one of the most important coming from the bench. But I don't know if you saw, but FIFA posted like... Uh... She was the, a world champion with the U-17s, and then she was with the U-20s, and now she can probably be with the full team. So there's players that never they've never been champions like in any single age, you know? So the fact that she might be a third-time champion, like world champion, that's like amazing. And that also talks about that she has experience, you know? She's been like in the big stage already, so she knows how to deal with that, and I think she's going to be a critical player for Spain. When you look as well at the top scorers, though, for Spain, you've got Bonmati, Redondo, you've got Hermoso. Of course, I know that you've played against Hermoso in the Mexican League. Can you just tell me a bit about her game? Honestly, top, top player. Like, I have played against her and I was, I was impressed, like, by the way she plays. She's just, like, really technical. She likes to always have the ball and she creates a lot of opportunities like in front of goal. So yeah, definitely I think another critical player for Spain. Any obvious weaknesses though in this Spain team you think that England could look to exploit? Well, I mean, I think if they want to look for weaknesses, they should watch the game against Japan. I mean, Japan was like very effective and direct, but I think definitely probably their their defenders, their defensive line is probably, I mean, it's not bad, but it's probably one of, like, their weaknesses. Um, and, yeah, I mean, if you want to see their weaknesses, definitely just watch the Japan game. Okay, well, looking over on the other side and looking at England, as I've kind of hinted at before, you know, as a Welsh from maybe a team I wouldn't have liked to see at this stage, but they are there. In fact, I remember when we spoke back in Mexico City quite a few months back, you actually said you thought they were a pretty good favourite for this tournament. But as they entered those knockout games, that tough game against Nigeria, they really struggled at times in that match. And then to lose Lauren James to suspension at that point as well, Coming off of that round of 16 game, did you think that this team was going to make it to the final or possibly crash out a bit sooner? Honestly, I mean, I think, like you said, before the World Cup started, I thought England was going to be one of like the big teams in the World Cup. So, yeah, they did struggle, but, you know, they have quality. So it was a matter of not time, but like just checking details and like correcting the mistakes they did. But I honestly thought they were going to make it pretty far in the tournament. Well, with Lauren James just coming back from suspension for this match now, it's going to cause a bit of a selection headache there. Ella Toon filled in for her. She didn't have the, the best kind of form going into this tournament, but she's still got a reputation as a big game player. She did score, of course, in the last match as well. If you're Serena Vigman, are you going with 
Lauren James, or are you going to stick with Ella Toon going into this game? Wow. Uh, I honestly don't know. I think that's a really big decision for her. I mean, it's the last game. We all know, like, she did a pretty big mistake, like, with the red card. Of course, it's something she's going to have to learn from. She was out for two games. So, I don't know. You know, like, it could be, it could not be, but that's... I don't want to be in her shoes right now because that's a big decision for her to make. We've seen, of course, England in their last game against Australia. One of the key things for them, they really wanted to dictate the tempo in that game. They held on to the ball, really kind of took out the counter-attacking threat that, that, that the host could pose in that match. And in fact, when you look across the whole tournament, England have had the majority of the ball in all of their games. Now they're coming up against Spain. That's probably not going to happen. Do you think that could pose a, a, a real challenge for England, being the team that, that aren't on the ball for most of that match? I mean, I think England, yes, they do like to have the ball, but I also think it's a team that they know how to play without the ball, you know? Like, I think they can probably rely a little bit more, like, in the pace they have up top. So I don't think they're going to be, like, super concerned that they probably are not going to have the ball, like, all the time, and they're going to be ready to attack when they do have the ball. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be a great challenge and a great match to see those two, like, teams and see what they propose. Looking at the bigger picture here, though, of course, it's the first time that either of these teams have made it to the Women's World Cup final. What does that say to you about the development of the, the women's game internationally? I mean, I think the fact that you don't have the U.S. like in the semifinals and in the final, that says a lot, you know, because they've always been like the big team. They've always been the big like country that's always there you know so the fact that this is the first time when we're gonna have like a different like world champion that talks about that soccer is developing you know like in every country but i think spain and england especially those two if you look at their leagues they're it's probably one of the best leagues in the country in the world you know so they also have like pretty good like youth um ages like if you see spain like i talked about earlier they were champions in the u17 in the u20 so they've been working pretty good like with the younger ages and yeah england right now i'm looking at the squad and basically half of their players were starters when i was in the u20 world cup you know so they're also young players so yeah it's definitely growing and it's definitely going to be an interesting match to watch and you know, you've mentioned the domestic leagues in each of those two countries. It's a pretty big thing to note here in that there's no NWSL players in either of these squads for the entire 23. There's none there. So when you look at that and you look at how leagues are developing then around the world and improving, um, what do you think that says for the future of the women's game? I mean, I think it's promising, you know, because I think before there was a big gap especially like you mentioned about like with the NWSL teams or just like the U.S. team with the other countries. There was always a big gap, especially I feel like in the athleticism, in the athleticism part. But now, like, I think that gap is, is gone, you know, like um, countries, leagues, players, like they've all like been evolving with the game. And I think this is just the beginning of something very promising for the future. OK, I'm going to put you on the spot now. What is wow. your prediction for the final score of the Women's World Cup final? I think it's going to be a really close match, but I think England is going to win 2-1. I think. But you we'll had see. to go and say that one, didn't you? <laughs> well, we will see. We will indeed see the Women's World Cup final. What's your prediction? Oh. oh. You know what? They're going to lose in the most England way possible. Spain will take oh. on penalties. I, I also think if it's not a 2-1, it's going to go to penalties. So, mm -hmm. But it's definitely going to be a really close match. I mean, there's top players in both teams, you know, so it's going to be a great match. Indeed it will be, and that game will take place if you do choose to stay up at 3 a.m. Arizona time on Sunday. Well, Alexia, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Of course. Thank you for the invitation. Anytime.